Okay, uh, Rick Young, what do you see the main difference is what you dealt with in judo as opposed to the Brazilian jiu-jitsu mentality? Uh, I think basically the, the judo guys go for the kill really quickly. The way they train is sometimes more intense in a shorter period of time. Um, it used to be, it might be a little bit different now, but it used to be as you know, uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it would be hey, let's let be laid back, let's chill out a little bit more. I take think your maybe, time, enjoy the take position. Take your time, enjoy the position. Don't be in a hurry. Exactly, because that comes from the culture. The culture in Brazil is a surfing culture, so you can relax on the beach, relax when you do Jiu Jitsu. Um, the judo has more immediacy to it. That's why, as you know, like five minute matches and um, came from 10 minutes originally to five minute matches. And also in that five minutes, if you're thrown on your back, it's finished. If you're pinned for 30 seconds, now 25, you're finished. So there's more immediacy in the gripping, there's more immediacy in the way they move. Um, and again, I think now it's a little bit closer because with a co more competition oriented Jiu Jitsu, um, it's, it's changed a little bit. You've got big athletes now, guys who are training really heavy, but still I think Judo is more, more not more direct, but more um, straight to the more point. More aggressive, it's more, more, aggressive. more aggressive. Yeah, and it's kind of like wrestling, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, very much. What do you think of the differences? To me, it's more of an attacking style. Like, look at David Camarillo. His style of Judo, Jiu Jitsu is more attacking, it's more aggressive. Uh, his father was a judoka, yeah. so when he was coming up under health, yeah. he had that attacking also, style. So he trained a lot in Europe, right? He yeah. came to Europe a lot to train. And the European judo, is, is, you know, it's very physical judo, where you've got the Japanese judo, which is more relaxed, snap the gi, uh, European judo, more belt oriented. Do you think, uh, you think the judokas uh, stress more color chokes? More so? Um, I, Arm bars I, and collar chokes, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, because you know, as you know, the, the, the time is limited. And then, as we were talking about today, when you have the transition, the transition from top to bottom. If you've not thrown them for the fully pawn, then when you throw them, you can only go for one or two techniques. So most of the judo players have, you know, two, maybe three things to do on the ground. Um, maybe even one. Like Toshihiko Koga basically did a strangle from maybe a field uh, uh, Sienagi. Um, or uh, Suri Suri Komikoshi, uh, and then he would have his strangle, but pretty much that was all he did in competition anyway. He probably had more when he was practicing. Um, and then Neil Adams, of course, has got a whole bunch of stuff, and that's going way back, and, and he was fantastic for the, for the armbar. Of course, that was his Takuyi Waza, his favorite technique. But I, yeah, I think you're right, yeah, absolutely. Just because of the nature of the sport, the rules will dictate the, the techniques that are going to come out, right? So, so the nature of it, throw, and then if they're not doing anything 10, 15 seconds, then they're, they're back up. I think the style of uh, judo played a big part men, men, uh, mentally with the, uh, sh the judo with the shudo fighters because of the same thing. When you're fighting, you're punching, you're kicking, you take the guy down or throw him or get thrown. You have to attack and you got 15 seconds to 30 seconds to submit your guy or you're back up to your feet. So it was attack, that, attack, yeah. attack. Shooter, and, yeah? yeah, originally, well, yeah, and that, that. that's what made it a spectator sport. Three five-minute rounds, you took your partner down, you had 15 to 30 seconds to submit, and if you didn't, you're back to your feet and you're slugging again. Wow. So that mentality, the same style of mentality, um, <clears throat> someone asked me what uh, catch wrestling was, and I said, it's kind of, to me, the mentality for catch wrestling is jujitsu on steroids, because it's attack, attack. If you can touch it, you can take it, and they're attacking all body parts if they can attack the leg or the wrist or the neck, whatever they can go for, and they try to get the submission or the quick kill, that's what they're after. I think, you know, it, it depends where you train with as well, isn't it? If you're training yes. elite players, you're going to be trained a certain way. So, like, when you trained at the Edinburgh Cup and you, you met the guys there and trained and taught them, um, then those guys were training for potentially the Olympics, the Worlds, the Europeans, the British. They were training really hard for that. So you don't have time to do things which aren't specific to your sport or specific to the competition arena. So you don't have time to play around with this or play around with that. Um, so you've got to make make sure that everything is, because you only have a certain amount of energy and a certain amount of time, like when you did shoot, right? Yeah. You, 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 when you were uh, competing. So I think that's, that's another thing. 
Whereas for like a recre recreational jiu-jitsu player, who has a, maybe not a lot of time, but can start to play with things a little bit more, so play with the guard, play around with different chokes and different- They enjoy uh, the positions more yeah. and the transitions. Yeah. Uh, the same thing when, when I was getting ready for a fight, in, in the shooto, in the catch wrestling aspect of it, I had to take 12 guys down in a row. There's really? 12 guys in class. Wow. He goes, you have to take each one of these guys down. He goes, if you play, if you play, you're gonna get tired. And then after I took 12 guys down, they lined back up and he goes, now you gotta submit each guy. And I remember I was like pulling guard and he goes, what are you doing? You're not playing. Don't play, you're gonna get tired. Attack, don't play, attack. There's no time to play. And it was just that mentality because of the fact that you have so many guys that you had to go against. Yeah. You couldn't sit and play with guys, you had to attack them. Yeah. So that type of mentality for me was kind of ingrained and then and then as time went on, it was uh, Master Higgins saying, hey, take your time, enjoy your position, enjoy the real estate that you've, you've uh, come into, whether, you know, the dominant yeah. position, yeah. enjoy that. But also, for the way you're talking about training there, you have to be in shape for that, right? Yes. I mean, I mean not just physical shape, but mental shape, emotional shape, because if you're not emotionally ready for a session like that, it can, it can shake you up. If you're not mentally ready, I mean, obviously, physically, you want to be ready, but you and, and then like it's okay one session like that. But then, when you're doing it almost every day, yeah. or every, even every second day, every second practice, then you know it's really tough on your body. It, it and burns you head. out, and, yeah. it, it, and it's easier to have a nice, easy roll and go to class and, and not yeah. be under the gun all the time. That's right. Like Mark Preston said to me, Mark Preston, my, my judo instructor, as you know, he he said that when he trained at Kendall full time judo, it took him six months to just. Get rid, to get, to get over the shock of training full time, three times a day, six days a week, hard. And he said that actually two times on a Saturday, I think, and three times on Monday, and Friday. But the shock, he said, mentally of having to do that, and he said that's why a lot of guys would be leaving. Oh well, yeah, you would you be, burn out real quick. burn out really quick. And he said the only criticisms he has of those times are that they train too hard. Too hard. And he said they needed more rest period. And he said if they, if they they used to have a board of 20, the, the 20 athletes in there, from one, one to 20. And he was, he said, I was always number one. He said, wow. always. And he said, if I said it was enough, then the coach would go, okay, that's enough, too much for them. Um, but if you were number 20, somebody else was waiting to take your place and you'd drop off if you stayed there too long. Wow. And then someone else came into your place. But he said the training was incredibly hard, but I think sometimes it's counterproductive. And that's getting back to the different mentalities where sometimes a light session isn't a wasted session. You know, like you, you, were, you were talking about this at the weekend, about allowing people to catch you, and learning from being being caught, and learning to, to roll light and not get injured. And if you can do that, you're still keeping the motor running, you're still training. You don't feel like it's a wasted session, though, because, you know, I mean, if, if I roll with you, I'm going to get smashed, you know. If the you older you are, out. the so, more you got to slow it down yes, a bit. So, so then if you can roll, Easy. Consistent, consistently though. And then every now and then you can turn it on if yeah. you feel if you feel yeah. like it's there and your your partner's are, uh, okay with that, then you can switch it on a little bit more. Obviously, when you're talking about world class level, Olympic level judo players, world class level jiu jitsu players, and they're competing in the Pan Ams, the Worlds, Abu Dhabi Pro, you know whatever, then of course they might have a different rhythm to their training. But for your normal guy, or for me, for as an older uh, older person, then. You know, it's um, important that I get a, a certain rhythm of training. Otherwise, and also when you're teaching, you know, you know, you, you're going to burn yourself out for teaching. You're not going to be able to go and teach. It's nice to have different paces. It's yeah. nice to walk in one day and, and try to rip everyone's arms off and choke everybody, and, and then it's another just to coast and let them attack and work your defense. For sure, for sure, yeah. So that's it. That's the difference between judo versus jujitsu mentality by Rick Young. By Eric Paulson. Rick Young. Eric Paulson. <laughs>